An old Ron had risen up out of the ground when he inserted the jewels into the statues. To make it sound, he needed the right instrument. My noble win, Tekko. Unko Anana. Koke Koke Machin. Wata, wata, wata. Tekko Ubi Po. Chuta Kala! Deco Ubi Po! Coke Coke Machin! What a what a what a! As soon as he took his first steps in the tunnel, the gigantic stone door closed behind him. The light from the candle bounced down the narrow stone passageway while he searched for some clue that would lead him to the shaman. When he pointed his tenuous light at the ground, Teku thought he could make out the footprints of Yaka and his captors. He was slowly bending down to study them, when suddenly he noticed that several dark forms were emerging from between the rocks. It was a trap. When he stood up, Teku received a sharp blow to the head, and he saw no more. Teku, open your eyes. Come on, wake up. 
Deku sat up slowly. It felt as if his head was about to explode. Up here, by the light of the gods. I didn't think you survived the attack on the village. How did you manage to get here? I was starting to think all was lost. Despite being locked in those cages, Master and Apprentice couldn't hide their joy at finding one another. Teku told the shaman how some people had managed to survive the fire. He spoke of his adventure in the marshes, of how the monkeys had carried him in flight through the trees. Yaka was astonished by what his apprentice was telling him. They talked about this for a long time. Then Teku asked about the strange creature they all worshipped in the painting on the wall of the cavern. His master's expression suddenly turned serious. As if it were something he would have preferred never to have to speak about. It all started long before your birth. As you know, our ancestors were born after the fourth destruction of the world. Since then we've populated the earth and tried to honor the gods, whose wrath could bring on another cataclysm. Living in harmony and respecting this world should be our very nature, no? But there is something inside us. A dark corner inherited from the primeval night that makes us place greed and power before all the good we might create. The confrontations between tribes started up again and fire once a symbol of wisdom and a sacred gift from the creators began to be used for destruction. We seem doomed to repeat our fate. But this time we weren't alone. After the first eons, a creature of great power rose up in the mountains. Gigantic being with the face of a bird. Full of wisdom and light, it showed us how to rebuild the cities and recall the teachings the ancients had forgotten. The tribes called him Tezka. It's the same creature you saw in that painting. But the monster Teku had seen in the painting was terrifying. More like a tyrant than a wise leader. His deep, almond-shaped eyes reflected insanity. Seeing his apprentice so confused, Yaka continued with his story. For a time, under the teachings of Tezka, the ancients were able to prosper. Until, little by little, they started to worship him as a god. Then some of them started to perform sacrifices in his honor to gain his favor and attention. In this new situation, the tribes became divided. Some started to capture prisoners from other villages to offer up in sacrifice to Tezka. Others abandoned their homes in search of some place far from all that madness. Our ancestors even dared to cross the sea. But that night, we met up with our past again. There was something in that story Teku couldn't understand. As he was telling it, the shaman vacillated as if he were hiding something. 
Why would a creature as wise and good as the one Yaka was describing allow itself to be seduced by terrible sacrifices? Nevertheless, before he could ask, the conversation was cut short. Hanging from the belt of the warrior, Teku could see a bunch of keys. These could be the keys to the cells. Now, he had to put his mind to getting them and escaping. seemed to fit perfectly onto the stone figure. The ancient sacred mount, the Daiwus, was before him. 
Mounted on the ancestral beast, he could catch up with his enemies and rescue Yaka. But there was no time to lose. Wakcha had taken Yaka inside the temple. Teku had to find a way to activate the bridge again so he could cross. It seemed like the bird had stolen the egg from the statue. Un 
camote y la tepera. Ni un copina la bancaga. Una con gusto. Those people were making offerings to the temple's cultists to avoid reprisals. If Teku left an offering like that, they would activate the bridge to pick it up, and he'd be able to sneak into the temple. It didn't fit. The symbol on the stone didn't match the one on the door. <laughs> 